We're all, all right. set. Okay, great. If, if you're just joining us, uh, I have died. <laughs> I, I've caught uh, USB itis from Riley Quinn, our previous guest. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's it's ju it just lives in my chest now, and it's killing me. Awesome, it's unfortunate. Oh, that's a damn shame. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do this with only two hosts and a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to Well, there's your problem, a podcast about engineering disasters with slides, which is also in and of itself a disaster. Uh, From beyond the grave. Yes. Mm. <laughs> um. I'm Justin Rosniak, also do not eat zero one on the Twitter. And or is it, it You're not do uh, not eat zero one on the Twitter. You're do not eat one on the Twitter. You're do not eat zero one on the th YouTube. Think, I'm I'm glad I'm glad I have we need three people to get this right, you know, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but really just one person, because I rarely fucking know either. Oh, you're attributing a lot of competence to me that I do not have. Well, well, <laughs> well, 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 well. I heard we, yeah. I heard we screwed up on the uh, airplane episode, but you know we don't know anything about planes, so which we were very clear about, actually. <laughs> yeah, we told them that. Yeah, we we confused a pitot tube with a, an angle of attack sensor, which is the little wing thing next to the pitot tube. Which we're very uh, sorry, and we'll do patents. Yes. Oh, yes. Also, pronouns he him. That, that's me. All right, that's that's my introduction done. <laughs> uh, the walking corpse <laughs> of Alice Caldwell <laughs> Kelly. Uh, pronouns for now: she and her. Uh, <laughs> pronouns deceased. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Watch this space. L late of this podcast. Um, yeah, I, I do a podcast called Trash Future as well as this. You should listen to that. It's very funny. Even if I die before we do the next one, it will still be funny. Uh, yeah, did I say pronouns she and her? Yes. You did. Okay, then that's it. That's that's me. Cool. Okay. And uh, arriving at my queue on time for once, uh, I am Liam Anderson. I am at Old Man Twitter on Anderson. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson on Twitter. God old, damn it. Old, old Man Twitter old, on old Anderson. Man, that's pretty accurate, though. Uh, Stunning display of competency. I have to change the name of the goddamn <laughs> group chat. <laughs> Pronoun. In him. Uh, yeah, a uh, shout out to the people uh, who were real fucking mad about the helicopter thread. Ah, uh, mm. y'all give me life, which I have and Kobe Bryant doesn't, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> plus one, plus fucking one. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, real quick, like, I understand that when people die, it's, you know, sometimes hard to grapple with feelings, and a lot of people are feeling a lot of complex things right now, but at the same time, if you're getting mad at an engineering disasters podcast, which talks about death as, like, a necessary part of itself, uh, you're looking in the wrong place. Uh, oh yeah, and I'm on stolen Lenape land, although we don't know if Raz is. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Okay. Also, if if you want some schadenfreude, just wait a week for me to die, and then you'll be able to, like, uh, dunk on my corpse. And I, oh. I assure you, I won't hold it against you. Yeah, yeah same. Uh, if the universe ever gets around to striking me dead uh, successfully, uh, go nuts. <laughs> mm. All right. We all die in a helicopter crash somehow. I'm not getting in a helicopter. I'm not getting in a helicopter, in a helicopter again. again. Like nope, ever. nope, 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 nope. Can't make me. All right. So, you'll see on the screen in front of you a bridge. Well, two bridges, actually. Ignore the suspension bridge. Um, Notably not collapsed into the no, water. No, it hasn't collapsed into yet. the water. <laughs> That's because this bridge, unlike us, has risen from the grave multiple times. <laughs> this is... <laughs> This is the Quebec Bridge, right? Um, and we're gonna learn about the story of its construction and why it needed to be built three times. Factor of safety, just like our podcast yeah, well, last I, week. I did. I did want to say, actually, speaking of bridges, um, the reason we're doing this is because last week, as you know, we uploaded the Tacoma Narrows Bridge episode. Finally, we finally mm -hmm. got around to that. Uh, we're really episode proud of 13. that. Oh, yeah. yeah, you guys were. We're adamant about getting more bridge stuff, so here we are. You know, we really hope you like it. Definitely go check out the Tacoma Narrows episode. Uh, if you haven't yet, we put all of our, our time and energy and attention into that, and it killed Alice. So, you know, definitely, definitely check that out. M much like Red Dead Redemption, in a like stunning, dramatic twist, I got the virus that's going to kill me, 
while we were recording the Tacoma Narrows episode. Oh, damn shame. <laughs> All right, tell me about the bridge that hasn't right. fallen into the water okay, yet. Okay, so I um, uh, just wanted to say, one thing, one thing I've done in the previous podcast is I've not been very good with sources, so I just want to say the bulk of the information from this podcast came from a three-part article in Structure Magazine written by Frank Griggs Jr. That link will be in the description, as will be the- <laughs> Written by Frank Grimes? Oh, it's Frank Griggs. Yeah, but I was the, from the, the, the safety guy from The Simpsons, oh. you see. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah. Mm, whoosh. Mm. I, I, was, I, was, I, was doing a, I was doing a joke oh, there. Oh, shit. We can't do jokes on the comedy podcast. We already got cancelled <laughs> yeah, about that's it. True. That's true. Can't do true. jokes. And we'll, uh, I'll also have image sources. All right. So, anyway, what we should start out with is talking about what is a cantilever bridge, right? Hey, that's that thing near where I live. Yes. Well, relatively near. Yes. Because that- I live in a tiny country, uh, so everything is kind of near me. <laughs> Everything's near everything, yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is the, yeah, this is the fourth bridge over the Firth of Forth, obviously the, the big famous one, right? And it's still the second largest one in the world. Um, so what is a cantilever bridge? Well, basically you have these large, big spans here called cantilevers, right? And, you know, there's two cantilever arms on each, right? And then in the middle is this tiny little span here, right? And that tiny little span is supported by, you know, the two cantilever leaves on either side, right? Hmm. So, like, if you decided to do a suspension bridge without any suspending, because it's all rigid. Oh yeah, and I mean the the famous the famous uh, way to demonstrate this concept was um, Benjamin Baker's human model, right? Um, <laughs> where, where this is how they did all engineering until like 1994. Yeah, ex- <laughs> yeah. Thank God for CAD. So, so you, you, <laughs> Jesus Christ, you can sort of see analogous to the fourth bridge up here, right? We have a, a man in a hat, and another man in a hat s- suspending a, a third man in a hat, right? Right. And you see they, they have, like, rigid supports, right? Compression, 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 right? And that's tied down, they're, they're holding a bunch of bricks on one end and on the other end, right? And then what you can't quite see is that they also have ropes behind them, right? Be, uh, over their arms, right? So tension, 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 and tension, right? Hmm. That's the shittiest game of Duck Duck Goose I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> so it, th- instead of a guy in a hat, you have a series of like structural members in a oh, hat. Yeah. Also with also hats. With yeah. hats, yes. So yeah, you got to put the hats on. You got to like draw a little hat. Anagalus to the oh yeah, so hat and <laughs> hat. So anagalus to the bridge. You have you know the top members in tension, the bottom members are in compression, right? And the way you want to think about this is that um, I need to use another color now. God, uh, each one of these things here is like a separate structure, right? which is not interdependent at all on the little span in the middle. So both of these stand alone, and their entire job is to support this little span in the middle. Mm. And so this could take a lot of forms, right? It's not just, uh, not just the, the sort of fourth, birth of fourth um, design. So here's, here's three right here, you know, on the top. Wow, this compressed really badly. Um, <laughs> oh boy! All right, I kind of like that middle one though. You can get quite artistic with this, oh, yeah. I guess. So on the top, we have the Commodore Barry Bridge. This is in Philadelphia, right? So no, it's not. It's not. It's in. Tell the people where it's it is. in Chester. Tell the people it's in where Chester. It is. Right? Thank yeah, you. It's in Chester. I will not stand for Delco Erasure on this podcast. <laughs> it goes from Chester to New Jersey, right? So the center span is sort of here-ish. It's it's done in such a way that you can't really tell where the cantilever ends and the center span begins, but then below that is the Tokyo Gate Bridge, where you can see quite clearly mm. the center span, because it doesn't have any trusses, right? And it's just that, that middle bit just designed to make you anxious, I think. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 
love to feel my car, my my light and friendly car sway around in a wind mm. and just be like, alright, yeah. this is fucking it, man. <laughs> you just look over to the side and there's like no supporting structure at all. Uh, just you and the void. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Love the void. <laughs> big big void fan over here. And the- well, it's good because it's about to get you. <laughs> <laughs> and then the bottom one, we have the Heart Bridge. This is in Jacksonville, Florida. And it's sort of a suspended cantilever, right? So the center span is up here, and then there's cables that go down. I don't know what the purpose of that is. I just want needed an extra Looks picture. Looks nice. Yeah. yeah, it does look nice. So, so, so somebody had somebody had an idea, and they were like, "Yeah, let's let's have a like a, a suspension bridge, but also not." Oh yeah, let's. I mean, it, it, it's Florida. This is over like a forty foot trench full of like alligators and. Jet skis and stuff. So. Yeah, the moat. Yeah, you got to cross a moat. Oh yeah, that's so they can just drop the center span at any time. It's like a, it's like a, a defensive mechanism. Yeah, they, they they see any invasive species coming up the uh, from the Florida Keys, they can just cut all of those. Yeah, it's like Switzerland. So, um, one of the things about uh, you know cantilever bridges is that you know sometimes there are structural members that seem like they should be be there which don't need to be there at all right so this is this is a picture from the quebec bridge right and you can see down here well i previously highlighted over here this is about where we're looking at where the one big cantilever span interfaces with the center span right um and uh so you see this um this lattice work up here right hmm seems like that little walkway. Yeah, that's all it is, is a walkway. Otherwise, the center span just connects, you know, somewhere down there with this large um, I-bar assembly over here. Of course, our favorite structural member on this podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah, flashing back to high-strength steel. Uh, We're going to talk more about I-bars later. Oh, good. Just oh, a little fun. bit, but they will be involved. <laughs> and I assume that's not foreboding... Were you on, were, Liam? Were you even recording that episode, or was that before no, that was the, we that got you on That was the first board? episode that didn't that was, have Liam. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then and then Liam got mad because he wasn't on the podcast. I did actually because <laughs> you and I had talked about having a podcast, and I was excluded, so I just kind of <laughs> my way uh, into this. <laughs> so, uh, thanks again for my third of the Patreon money. Uh, we're, we're glad you did. Uh, love y'all so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. So, so okay. Um, where am I going with this? All right. So the story of why they needed to build the Quebec Bridge, right, starts with something called the National Transcontinental Railway of Canada, also known as the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway, because that was the private company that built the railroad, right? With a lot of government subsidies. Mm. Not to be confused with the Grand no. Funk Railroad. No. There's the tra- the, <laughs> Just no. Well, the, Grand, the Grand Trunk ran from Winnipeg East, and then the Grand Trunk Pacific ran from Winnipeg West. Right? Just call it one goddamn thing, man. Oh, no, they... they Split it into two companies for reasons. Yeah, sure. I, I, yeah, I, I okay. love the idea that the, the center of the world for geographic purposes here is in fucking Winnipeg. It's right there at Portage in Maine, yeah. <laughs> Winnipeg is nice! <laughs> I'm sure. I'm just going off of that one song by the Weaker Lands. Oh, One Great City? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. We, we, should, we should edit that in for our, like, uh, outro music. Oh, yeah. We'll get a copyright strike. No, I don't think the weaker thans know what copyright is. <laughs> so, um, all right. So the National Transcontinental Railway was Canada's third transcontinental railway, right? Which was mm. built by the Grand Trunk with some assistance from the Canadian government. A lot of assistance from the Canadian government. Um, <laughs> How much assistance from the Canadian government? A lot. And it was oh, okay. Uh, do you mean do you mean to say that they weren't just doing this all on their own with their pioneering spirits? Just like rolling up their shirt sleeves and building fifty miles of track an uh, hour. Uh, no, no, they they needed land grants. Mm. But, but 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 my settler mythology. <laughs> oh. So it went from Moncton, New Brunswick, which we've discussed previously on this podcast. The worst goddamn city in the world. Yeah, the the, the whole yeah. the worst. <laughs> to um, Prince Rupert, British Columbia, right? 
which um dumbass name just never never let yourself be colonized by the british or after you kick us out all of your place names will be like oh prince prince lord duke fansington town <laughs> hey man prince rupert's yeah. land is nice if you like polar bears and i love polar bears oh well, i highly recommend of uh, going and freezing your dick off at york factory yeah, that that's the plan i will have <laughs> yeah save save myself yeah. a trip yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that's like that was like 30 still is 30 miles from the alaskan border this railroad gets way up there right um the whole route survived intact for barely five years or so because right after they finished it the canadian government you know well canada got involved in world war one and since it big mistake by the way paralleled a previous uh railroad the canadian northern through certain uh areas they just decided, all right, let's l rip up the rail on this brand new railroad and ship oh, it over God. to France and uh, use France. France and use it there, mm -hmm. right? You need a bunch of little narrow gauge trench railways. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Battle of Vimy Ridge all over these motherfuckers. All right. So it was built to extremely high standards uh, for the days. So there's low grades, minimal curves, and by far the largest structure on this railroad was the Quebec Bridge crossing the St. Lawrence River, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll look at the we'll look at the site here, right? So um o over here is Quebec City, right? Um and then the bridge crosses the river over here, right? So St. Lawrence of course was a busy shipping channel at the time, still is, right? There's a very tall escarpment on both sides, you know, this big cliff, right? So it needs to be a tall bridge. And you need a tall bridge anyway, because you know boats. You know they still have sails at this point, right? They gotta they gotta clear the bridge. That's fine. Just just take the mast down for a second and like oh. paddle it under, and just stow it, and then everyone get your hands real long, and we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll just doggy paddle our our <laughs> massive coal barge through this motherfucker. Exactly. Yeah. Low bridge, everybody down. <laughs> I would pay to see a like nautical version of the eleven foot eight bridge <laughs> that just shears off all of the like rigging off of a sailing ship. I, I think there's ask us about the LNG tankers that uh, come up the Delaware. Oh. Mm. Well, that they just have to shut down the bridge while it goes over because uh, otherwise, uh, I can't remember if it's because it might explode or if it just distracts drivers. <laughs> a pretty wide range of potential yeah. failure there. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the thing exploding would be pretty distracting. It would be very distracting, yes. So, this bridge needed a bunch of rigidity um, to handle heavy trains, right? So, suspension bridges were out, right? And, uh, you know, it was going to carry the National Transcontinental Railroad, but also streetcar tracks and potentially some highway uh, lanes, right? So, there's a royal charter starting the Quebec Bridge Company, uh, and they were going to build this bridge. This is the late this is the mid 1890s at this point, I believe. So they hire consulting engineer Theodore Cooper, right? Mm -hmm. So, so this guy is a widely known bridge engineer at this point. He's educated at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. I I can Rensselaer. God, I don't, damn. I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> you went to you went to a school. That had a dorm named after that family. I, that's true. Yeah. Well, I that doesn't <laughs> rhymes I, rhymes with engineer. I, I never figured out how to pronounce Th that that thing though. Th thank you, yeah. Alice. That's that's actually really useful. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't take him seriously though. He doesn't have a hat, which, as we've seen, is the essential part of any like structural bridge design. That said, he has quite a haunted gaze. Uh, this is true. That's Our boy true. has seen some shit here. Like his mm. bridges that are gonna go kill some people. Maybe it's just that he's he's someone else has just mispronounced his name, <laughs> and he's just like. <sighs> but Cooper is pretty easy to pronounce. I don't trust you. I don't trust don't. you. <laughs> Mispr mispronounce the name of his school. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I don't care. Maybe they did mispronounce Cooper. Maybe they just called him uh, Cooper. <laughs> Big C. They called him Big, Big C. Because Ke Quebecois, yeah. right? Like. Oh, he. Oh, you lost. Speak English. Yes. Yes. Uh, welcome back to the Plains of Abraham. Now, uh, Cooper <laughs> worked at, he, after he graduated from RPI, I'm not going to say the name. Yeah. He worked at, he worked at Midvale Steel in Philadelphia for a while. He designed a few big bridges, 
to my knowledge, none of them survive now. Um, but he was very well respected in his day. And so they brought him on as the consulting engineer for the Quebec Bridge. He basically became the man in charge of basically everything. He had the final say, right? Mm. And doing his Brunel act, I guess. Yes. Victorians loved that shit. They loved having like a consulting engineer who was just a guy in like a, a frock coat who just kind of bossed everybody around. Oh yeah. Not with like any like actual accountability or anything. You just you just had a guy. Now you gotta introduce the next player, the Phoenix Bridge Company, right? So the Phoenix Bridge Company operate out of Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Um, they're notable for inventing something called the uh, the Phoenix Column, right? Um, which is this thing here. Well, all of the stuff here is pictures of it, which is a, a sort of wrought iron column, which is made out of uniform uh, pieces of wrought iron, uh, which is much stronger than the solid iron columns which had predated this design right so this is like you know we have a we have we have a new fun structural member in addition to eye bars being introduced on this podcast um mm. so that's like what they're notable for that's not really going to come into this too much though uh but they're they're so they had a design engineer working at the firm named peter zlapka right <laughs> and i think he was polish <laughs> Sounds Polish. Really? Yeah. Should, should, you be, yeah, should be able to pronounce that perfectly. Yeah, then? I should be able to. Uh, there's a lot of Polish people involved in this uh, in this uh, in this series of events. So uh, Zlapka <laughs> bridge with a screen door on it. It didn't actually do anything to hurt the bridge. There was just incidentally a screen door. Yeah, we don't know what to do, so we put this here. We this yeah. feels right. So <laughs> the Phoenixville Bridge Company. Um, assisted in a preliminary design for the bridge, right? Um, just to have something to send out for bid, and they designed something with uh, uh, a sixteen hundred foot clear span uh, across the St. Lawrence River, right? Um, that was in eighteen ninety seven, and then uh, they got in five bids on the project, right? Including, of course, the Phoenixville Bridge Company, which you know had a bit of a competitive advantage. Right. Um, and Cooper suggested maybe we could make a longer span than 1,600 feet, and it might be more economical since then you can build the foundations closer to shore or on the shore. Right. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But also, he would then be building a bridge with a clear span longer than the Firth of Forth Bridge. <sighs> This is why you don't just have a guy in a frock coat. Hubris. Like, Hubris. Yes, <laughs> just, pu just punching out a collapsible opera hat and being like, ah, oh, yes, my grand fucking plans uh, are gonna like dwarf my various rivals, all of whom look as ridiculous as me. I, <laughs> Lord Fancington, will take my rightful place. Yeah, there's, there's just like... Lord Fansington decides to put an extra story on the bridge because Lord Fansington's rival, Lord Danfrthnri, <laughs> is like looming over the horizon, twirling his enormous moustaches. Several moustaches? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, these subtitles are going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, of course, uh, Zlapka decides all right, I'll revise the design from a 1600 foot bridge. To an eighteen hundred foot bridge, Phoenixville Bridge Company wins the uh, wins the tender, and they're they're here to, you know, they all ship up to Quebec and start building the bridge. Uh, yeah, cool. so that was uh, selected right. by Cooper, June thirtieth, eighteen ninety nine. Okay, so here was the first design for the bridge, right? It's it's not pretty, but it, you know it works. I, I would say the reverse of that, actually. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can, we have the aesthetic difference where I don't think it's pretty, but you do. Uh, but we can't really substantively disagree on how well it works. Yes, <laughs> it almost it almost works. There's a lot more ornamental iron work on this one than on the the one that actually got the one that got the one that is there today. Um, but. So, uh, by 1903, construction was underway, right? Iron work was going up. Uh, now, uh, Theodore Cooper, the consulting engineer who had final say on everything, 
was not in great health, right? Mm, right. So he did all of his consulting engineering from his office in New York City. I mean, that's relatable. <laughs> you know, to be to be a small bean who must have anxiety. Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, why not? God. <laughs> I don't want to make the the one and a half days journey to Quebec City every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one and a half days if you're a fucking coward. We have done it in far less time than that. It's 1899, Liam. Trains you have to take the train, which probably doesn't go substantially slower than the train up there now. Just, uh, L- L- Liam getting a GCI horse somehow. <laughs> Ah, uh, this is old Redbeard. Yes, <laughs> mm. still hit VMAX in Newfoundland for some reason. Yeah, I got the <laughs> Porsche GTI. Yet to feed it. <laughs> High octane hay. <laughs> <laughs> but Cooper never actually visited the site after uh, steel started going up. Hmm. Nice. That makes sense. I mean, uh, building sites, the loud, you know, you're in Quebec City, yeah. which you don't want to go to. Yeah, it's too French. Don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Every episode we talk about the French. <laughs> As we know, uh, bad <laughs> things do not happen by and large when you're just communicating plans, say, over the telephone. Uh, no, or, no, you know, which was this, or say, in this case, I mentioned this tele- point. a telegraph. Yeah. I was going to say telegraph. I don't fucking know. All right. <laughs> God, imagine how much worse we would be at doing this if we had to do it through a telegraph. Line. Fuck you. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> Strong letter to follow. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So the, the South Cantilever Arm was completed in 1906. And that's when Slapka from the Phoenixville Bridge Company realized something was wrong, right? Hmm. Good, this sounds promising. The bridge was a lot heavier than he had calculated, right? Oh, fuck. And that's because the dead weight estimate that Slapka has used was for the earlier 1600 foot span. <laughs> You're joking. As opposed to the 1800 foot span, which was under construction. He, he didn't change his, his calculation of how much it was going to weigh. With, when he added an extra 200 feet of iron because a guy decided that he wanted to outmatch Lord Fauntleroy? I mean, they probably had to get, you know, the bid done real quick, you know, they figure, ah, I'll do that later. Put in a change order. <laughs> <laughs> so, he relayed this, uh, this information to Cooper, and Cooper said, well, it's a 7% increase in weight. I think that's within tolerances. I think we're good. Keep keep building. Jesus fuck, what? Seven percent ma- ma- margin Ooh. margin margin of error. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a safety factor. You, you have a safety yeah. factor. Well you gotta remember not a very, not an especially good one, as it turns out. Well you gotta remember that Cooper <laughs> invented the uh the standards for uh railroad bridge construction, uh which are we're still in use today, which is I think it was the E ten standard is what it what they called it, which was like, mm. you know, the the basically the standard for what the bridge had to handle was, um, I believe it was two steam locomotives hauling an infinite number of freight cars. Uh, <laughs> uh, N plus one. Yeah, N plus yeah, one. Exactly. N plus one. <laughs> then E10 was the standard of the time. We're now up to E72, which is 7.2 times that. Uh, se- 7.2 steam locomotives hauling an infinite number of wagons, or no, 7.2 infinite uh, wagons. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Every every time a wagon goes over, I add 7.2 more wagons to the end of the yes. train. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, it, it's complicated. If I had more time to put this together, I'd explain it better. Right now, I'm, I'm stupid <laughs> though. So. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> we we're doing gamer excuses for our engineering podcast. Like there's they've been out for like four hours. There's lag. Uh I can't shoot so good. Uh yeah. at some point like I my guess my mouse is broken. One of us is gonna say the N-word and then not apologize for it, <laughs> and then donate to a bunch of Nazis, and then get yeah. mad when someone calls us on it. Uh what else we got? Uh I think that pretty much covers most of the like heated gamer moments. Yeah, I forgot. Get canceled I, I again. I forgot I was going to say. Yeah, we will get canceled right. again. Yeah, we have to redeem right, ourselves. Well, whatever. Finally, be- you, you, you're trying to. Well, you're trying to decide which slur you were going to. The only say. way we can redeem ourselves is by finally beating up PewDiePie in a Royal Farms. <laughs> <laughs> 
don't do it to the Patreon so that could happen. Yeah, right. exactly. All right. Okay. Next slide, please. Yeah, exactly. All right. So 7% <laughs> increase should be well within tolerances, right? It shouldn't be a problem. All right. So here's here's a nice picture of the bridge being built um, the day before the incident, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can see... Uh, I, 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 lo I love a photo taken the day before the yes. incident. Whatever that incident is. So you, you can see... Um, as I said before, you know, there's a little bit more ornamental ironwork on this one. It's much thinner and more spindlier bridge, right? Um, mm -hmm. So this is August of 1907, right? And some of the beams on the lower cord, the lower cord being this bit that goes down here and then comes back up here, right? Started bowing under the excess load as more steel was erected at the end of the bridge. You can see, you know, they, they're building out there. Should have, Should have started Airbus. Ah, uh, 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 damn. Uh. You beat me to it, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> should, should have started Bombardier. God, people got mad about that, too. Oh, like, they sure did. Yeah, we don't care. They're, they're, Quebec, they're Quebecois. Fuck off. <laughs> That, that's the slur. You do the gamer moment, but it's just for, like, the Q word. Habs are bad. Yeah. Bring, bring back the Nordiques. Uh, mm. Yeah. So, um, alright, so in the words of Frank Griggs from the article in Structure Magazine I mentioned earlier, almost immediately after the beginning of the construction of the suspended span, which is this part starting about here, right, um, in July... Problems with member 8L started, setting into motion one of the most bizarre set of miscalculations, miscommunications, and plain incompetence in the history of bridge building. Oh, so he was just talking about the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> For about 20 days after these deflections were noted, between August 7th and August 27th, messages were relayed both by telegram and by letter. Between the building site and uh, Cooper's office in New York City, determining what to do while the work proceeded as normal, right? Br bridge, bridge has crack. Stop. Oh, the crack in the bridge has stopped. Yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, you just wait two weeks for a letter that's like an old timey cursive. And it's covered in like ink blots and stuff. Yeah. And it just says the <laughs> Stop. <laughs> so, and of course, they can't send pictures or anything, you know, because they haven't invented that technology. You just look at this picture, it's barely there. Um, mm. So, so Cooper's trying to root out the cause of the Boeing in the, um, in the, in the, in the members, right? Oh, I just got the joke. You were talking about Boeing as in the aircraft company. Oh, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we're, we're all uh, sleep deprived. Yeah. yeah. I'm delirious I'm from uh, exercising, actually. <laughs> well, at least you have a good excuse. Yeah, I was about to say. Although Alice, mm. is, Alice is more about so. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. What, I, am, I am dying of consumption <laughs> uh, or some other Victorian novel disease. <laughs> well, that's um, it's very attractive to teenagers, though. So, yeah, mm, yeah, that's true. I have to look on all like pale on my sick bed. <laughs> uh, <coughs> yes. <laughs> so, <It did. laughs> um, Cooper's trying to root out the cause of the Boeing in the um in the in the in the beams here, right? He's like, mm -hmm. is it manufacturing defects? Is it improper installation? The one thing no one's prepared to consider. Was that maybe the bridge was overstressed? Oh no! But they asked him about it. Like he said himself. He had well, I guess he said it's well, it's fine or should be fine. But yeah, I don't understand why you wouldn't be like, "You sure about that, Hotshot?" <laughs> that seems that seems really easy because he's the guy with the frock coat and he's the guy who like designs the bridge. And if the guy in the frock coat with the hat tells you it's fine, you're not gonna be like, "Well, maybe it's not." Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. And this is this is 1907. They 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 sent you to go get killed in the fucking Sudan or something. Uh if you do that shit. Yeah, exactly. So, um eventually uh there's this guy Norman McClure, right? Troy McClure, got it. 
Hi, you may remember me from such bridge collapses as. <laughs> <laughs> so he finally goes after after they've been exchanging messages for 20 days. Just, just messages to just saying, just like you up, <laughs> you up, stop. <laughs> <laughs> love to get a telegram at like three in the morning and it's like all misspelled and shit that's fantastic. he finally goes to new york city on august 29th and he personally tells cooper that the the boeing here is not for manufacturing defects and also mentioned that it was increasing it had gone from three quarter of an inch to two and a quarter of an inches right they're still building at this point, right? Like, while he's telling him that, they're throwing more bridge over the thing, right? Yes. Um, cool. So, and again, I, I believe the, the biggest problem member was back here or so. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description with a little more, it's a research paper that has a little more detail, if, if anyone wants <laughs> to know that information, right? So, they... So they can visibly see that something is going not good, and they're just going to keep fucking going anyway, is that about right? Well, a lot of the people on the site were a lot more concerned than the engineers who had the final say over what to do. Oh, good. That's, I'm glad that has not been a theme. Yeah. <laughs> Never let engineers telecommute. No. Nope. Uh, you just have to do all of your communications and stuff, and like all of your planning from a uh, like bosun's chair suspended from the end of the bridge. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. Love, love me a bosun chair. That's mm. <laughs> I don't, I don't love a bosun chair. Um, coward. <laughs> I am a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I will not do that. <laughs> so eventually, so McClure comes down to. Um, uh, you know, Cooper's office and says, Hi, I'm I'm Norman McClure. You remember me you may remember me from such building sites <laughs> as the Quebec Bridge. Um and he says, All right. After a while of convincing, he, he managed to convince Cooper that yes, the uh the, the deflection here is increasing. And then it dawns on Cooper. Oh fuck. <laughs> 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 that's, 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 hell of an audio recording you got your hands on there. Yeah. He he tried he tried to like get them to stop building the bridge, but he just sent them a telegram saying stop. <laughs> and it just it's like what? Uh, okay. Okay. Well, oh no, the actual story's worse. <laughs> oh god. Of course it is. All right. So this happened, I believe, sometime in the morning. Um, August 29th, um, oh crap, what year is it? Um, uh, 1907, 1907, yes. So, you know, obviously, obviously the bridge is overstressed, this is a major problem, they need to stop construction, right? So Cooper, his first action is to telegram the Phoenixville Bridge Company and tell them what the situation was and say, look, we got to figure out a way to shore up all these structural members, make sure nothing gets worse, right? Mm -hmm. And he personally sends... McClure to Phoenixville to tell the bridge company, you know, stuff in more detail, right? Okay. Right. So McClure gets there at about 5.30 p.m., you know, Eastern time, right? And, you know... <laughs> Closing time. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? No Closing sympathy. time. <laughs> no, I was joking. So he gets there, and, you know, it's closing time, so they're like, all right, you know, let's... uh. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, you know what? They're about to stop work on the bridge today. Anyway, everyone's going to leave. We're going to sleep on it. Oh, of course. <laughs> they decide. We'll, we'll I, I got to take my union required eight hour sleep break. <laughs> we'll, we'll deal with this in the morning, right? Just putting on a big <laughs> sleeping cap and a big pair of slippers and like climbing into one enormous bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Again, quitting time. Everyone goes home. Um, and then, all right, so what happens over at the bridge? Now, it's also 5.30 there, same time zone, right? And, um, oh boy. So, the last train of oh, the shit. day <laughs> dropped, the last, dropped off the last steel that was going on the bridge. The workers bolted the steel on the bridge. And the whole damn thing collapsed. Just before quitting time at five forty-five, 
Oh, God damn it. God damn it. One more fucking thing you gotta deal with. You're just trying to go to Ye Oldie Saloon. Uh, mm -hmm. In French, though. You like, you, you, and, you have the, the big comical sleeping cat in your <laughs> hand. Yes. So, yeah, it, it collapsed, you know, 15 minutes after they decided to sleep on it. Um, of 86 workers on the bridge, 76 were killed. They were uh, mostly uh, mostly iron workers. Uh, they were they were of the Mohawk tribe from the nearby uh, Kanawake Reserve. I'm assuming I'm mispronouncing that. We forgive you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to continue to. But uh, of course, though, because those guys, you know, they're not important, and they can't telecommute. Yeah. In fucking like. A, a 1907. It's difficult to move iron into place with telegrams. Yeah, with that goddamn <laughs> attitude it is. <laughs> so because they were doing actual work yeah. uh, instead of just like grotesquely misunderstanding their own calculations and then trying to send a telegram at like 5.30 and being like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all of those guys died. Yes. yes. Yeah, because no one could be bothered to send hmm. a goddamn telegram. We, we begin to see some class character become evident mm -hmm. here, I just, suspect. Just a little bit, yeah. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this Gonna get that one, that one guy who wants us not to be communists mad at us again. Uh, mm -hmm. wah, wah. This wouldn't have, this wouldn't have happened. Well, Luigi. <laughs> no, yeah, that's not what I was going for, but yeah, that works. This wouldn't have been. Th Never. This would not have happened if uh, the telegram office had been open later. I assume they probably all closed down too. I have no evidence for that. Yeah, that's speculation. Um. <laughs> anyway, so that's that's one view. Here's here's another view of the bridge having collapsed. Um, eh. oh, yeah, shit. that is that, an yeah, extremely yeah. collapsed yeah, bridge. They put that on the ground. You see a whole lot of eye bars here. Um, our friend, mm -hmm. and over here, love to love to do a callback to episode Here's one. A lot of eye bars, which have you know sort of gone all wavy. Um, yeah, I don't think they're supposed to do that, are they? Uh, nah, there's a lot of stuff that looks wrong mm, with yeah. this bridge right now. Yeah, yeah, it's not like above stuff. It's kind of on there. Kind of just on the ground. Yeah, having murdered yeah. 70 odd people. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so investigation, right? Okay, so the Royal Commission is appointed the day after. They interview Cooper for like a week. They talk with the Phoenix Bridge Company and they talked with engineers building the only comparably sized bridge uh, at the time, right? Which was the, uh, the Queensboro Bridge, including. Hey. Including Ralph Majetsky, who we're going to talk a little bit more about in a second. They they interviewed all of them, but they were all just like, "Hey, I'm walking here," and just <laughs> slapped the roof of the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> so the report was released in March of 1908. They found the collapse was a result in errors in judgment of, uh, you know, Theodore Cooper and Peter Zlapka. They also said. These errors of judgment cannot be attributed to either a lack of common professional knowledge or to, ne to neglect of duty or a desire to economize. The ability of the two engineers was tried in one of the most difficult professional problems of the day and proved to be insufficient for the task. Right? It's like... Um, yeah, the next time I fuck something up that badly, I'm going to use that. Yeah, that's what that's what I want as well. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. my, my ability was tried in one of the most difficult professional problems of my day, and it proved to be insufficient. For the task. <laughs> I just so th they said that it couldn't be attributed to incompetence, cheapness, or neglect, right? And those were the three things I was going to attribute it to. So I'm kind of yeah, yeah. I was going to say yes. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> You know, just because it's the biggest bridge in the world doesn't mean you can't. Just doesn't mean that some cosmic force caused you to fuck it up. Mm. Uh, the report also noted that Cooper, of course, who wanted to build the biggest bridge in the world so badly, took too small of a fee for his consulting work. Which <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so wait a second. The, 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 their their view of this guy was not only was he too good an engineer. You know, honestly, you're not paying him enough. Because he took too small of a fee, he couldn't hire enough staff to properly supervise the project. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. No, yeah. Hubris, again. He thought he could do it all himself. 
that's not a desire to economize, though, uh, when you don't hire enough people to do the thing. Yeah, apparently not. I, I think I've identified a few <laughs> a few sort of holes in this in this commission. Nope, no, you haven't. That's a lie. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> God, oh, but whenever we do like a nineteenth century one, I'm just like, I, I'm I'm like, I'll never complain about the shitty FAA <laughs> of 2020 again. And then I always do, but understandable. Yeah, captive. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so no one faced criminal or civil charges, but. Uh, Theodore Cooper's reputation was absolutely ruined. He, I don't think he ever did any significant work ever again. Um, mm. But the thing is, the bridge still needed to get built. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, on to the second bridge. Oh, good. So, the <laughs> Quebec Bridge uh, Company is disbanded, the Transcontinental Railway Commission takes over, and um, they appoint three engineers, right? There's H. E. Vatale, Vatale, I think, I assume. That's fine. The former <laughs> former engineer for Canadian Pacific. Uh, this is engineer in the building stuff sense, not engineer in the driving the train sense. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell because of the difference in hats. Yeah. yeah. You know what I should have put in here is there's a good there's a good photo of all three of these people wearing hats. I didn't put that in the presentation. Um, oh, damn it. They uh, appoint Maurice Fitzmaurice. Fucking really? Yeah. yeah. I, I was not joking about everybody <laughs> in the like early twentieth century being named something like Fauntleroy and Chancellor. <laughs> and and <laughs> it's just that Key and Peel skit. <laughs> <laughs> and he worked on construction of the Firth of Fourth Bridge, right? Experienced mm -hmm. in building this sort of thing. And then they brought in uh, Ralph Majetsky, right? Um, Who we may remember from such uh, bridge disasters. Uh, so he was he was building the Queensboro Bridge at the time. Um, you know, he's a very prolific bridge builder. If it, he he built bridges all over America, including say the Ben Franklin Bridge in Philadelphia. Um, Great bridge. Yeah. Uh, well, once at my old job, um, the uh, one of my coworkers. Brought out one day like uh, a bunch of a bunch of um, uh, plans of the Ben Franklin Bridge, and he was like, "Look, it's the signature of the man himself." I was like, "Wow, <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's Ralph Majewski right there." <laughs> but yeah, um, I believe the second most famous Polish American after Richard Kuklinski. Um, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's 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 him, and then like the whole cast of season two of The Wire. Yes, yes. <laughs> so Ted Kaczynski in there somewhere. So mm. what happens here? And I guess we'll we'll sort of look at this diagram here. Is is um, Vadale from the Canadian Pacific Railroad decides I'm going to design the whole damn thing. I'm going to do the whole preliminary design, and you can sort of see there's some funky stuff going on with these cantilever spans, right? Like, note all mm. these these cross members that are, like, at angles, right? And uh, then there's, like, I'm, whatever's I'm seeing, going on I'm here. I'm seeing some things like, so, some words like probable, which <laughs> I, I feel like you don't want to see. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, what's life without a little risk? Oh, probable line of rock. Oh, that's that's geotechnical mm. investigation. I mean, there's not much you can do about that. Oh, that's reassuring, at least. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. Highest water on record. Um, all right. Well, we're we're doing our best to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His title. All right. So he designs the whole damn thing, and they send it out for bids, right? And uh, of course, immediately we get a clash of personalities. Firms come back with a variety of designs. And only one of them even vaguely resembles Vaudelaire's design. I believe that was from. I, I believe that's that's <laughs> this one up here, right? And and of course, uh, you can see here the Pennsylvania Steel Company comes back with a, a design for a suspension bridge uh, of our favorite design, which is self-anchored uh, using rocker towers with eye bars. Um, 
Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> that's just shit I like. Yeah, just 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 pause now. Go back and listen to episode yeah. one. Uh, we we hadn't really figured out the whole podcasting thing, but we had a hell of a lot better handle on it than they did. Bridges. Yes. You know, let's go when we look more competent by comparison. Oh yeah. All all of the, all of the comments there are just like, who's this dumb asshole who keeps interrupting <laughs> Justin? And then I fixed this by getting another dumb asshole. To help. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking thought, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so so Vadale is agitating for this one design up here, right, which looks kind of like his, and and meanwhile, um. Majetsky and Fitzmaurice, uh, they prefer another one down here by the St. Lawrence Bridge Company, which, you know, is a little more conservative, makes a little bit more sense, right? And, and looks a little bit more like the fourth bridge. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, just in case you were wondering about the, like, ego going on here. But because they want something more than a two-thirds decision, I believe that the, the Transcontinental Railway Commission appointed two more engineers to the, uh, to the board. To make the decision, and they side with Majetsky and Fitzmaurice, and Vadale decides to resign out of petulance. Um, <laughs> Man after my own heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gr great moments in French Canadian history. Yeah, so you know a lot of egos at work here, building the world's longest clear span, right? So they start building a new bridge, right? Um, over here, obviously. So it's big, it's ugly, it's beefy. It's very simple compared to Cooper's much lighter design, right? Why are you talking shit about me? Um. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to come in there? I'll come in there. <laughs> uh, first, first on-air murder in a in a podcast. <laughs> if I die, you have to edit this. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> no, fuck no. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not helping, I'm at death's door already. <laughs> so, the two cantilever arms, as we can see here, constructed without incident, right? Here they are, they're up. Um, you know, and they decided, rather than what Cooper did, which was they would build the center span out, Right, mm -hmm. poorly drawn arrows here. You're doing good. What they would do is instead they would bring it in. They'd bring the center span in on a barge, and they'd prefabricate it earlier, and they would then lift it into place. Right. Ah, some IKEA oh. shits. Yeah, I like that. Where you just you, you get the little Allen key, and you're like fucking around with it, and then you drop it like fifty feet into the water. Shit, cool. That's gone poorly. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me another. I don't have metric Allen keys. <laughs> In Canada, that's just irresponsible. Canada yeah. didn't do metric at the time. I don't. Oh my god! <laughs> this is the first use of the metric system in Canada. Was the Allen keys to put the bridge in place? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start small or big, and then in tragedy. All right. Mm. So this is the fateful day. September 11th, 1916. The, the other other 9-11. Yeah, the other other 9-11. Yes. It, it's it's 9-11, Salvador Allende, and then this. Yes. So, they, they, had, they, they had thought that maybe they should do this the previous week, when conditions were favorable, but they decided, no, we're going to actually spend a little extra time to sort of drill the workers into what the procedures are, and make sure this goes off without a hitch, right? Because the bridge had already fallen down once. They don't want to do it again. <laughs> yeah, why tempt? Yeah, exactly. Fight? We have to like <laughs> show the entire workforce the uh, like the IKEA drawing thing with the confused guy with the hammer, uh, <laughs> and like a, as like a what not to do. Yes. Somewhere on the bridge, just as team lift. <laughs> yes. But but instead of having like the the phone. With the question mark over his head, he has like a telegraph machine. <laughs> yeah. So they had very favorable conditions that day for lifting the bridge, right? There was no wind. It was high tide. So they start floating the bridge out of the facility. I think it was about 440 in the morning. Um, and they get the bridge out there at about 635 in the morning. 
they attach it to the big hydraulic jacks, right? That's those are these these guys hanging down here. And they start jacking up the span, right? Two feet at a time, starting at 7:40 a.m. And so they get it about 20 feet up, right? Sure. And then everyone broke for lunch. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Quitting time. <laughs> yeah, it's lunchtime, yeah. Right? And there's a <laughs> Once again. There's a whole bunch of journalists there, the press are there, you know, there's a lot of engineers there to observe. A lot of them were standing on the span itself as it was being jacked up. Oh, fuck. Right? Oh, sure. That's, but, you wow. know, lunchtime is like, all right, everyone off. We're going to go get lunch. You, uh, is the lesson of this going to be never take breaks, <laughs> ever? No. Uh, just continue <laughs> working as sleep-deprived and exhausted as you can? Who would do that? So at 10.30... They fire up the hydraulic jacks again. They start bringing her back up, right? And mm -hmm. at, at ten fifty, there's a there's a sharp crack, right? That doesn't look ideal. No. And the whole span fell in the river. Oh. <laughs> well, that sucks. Then you got to jack it all the way back up there. Uh, you can see it's it's not looking not looking so good. I don't know if they'll be able to reuse that one. <laughs> it's fine. It's just, it's just a little dent. It'll buff out. All right, so that, that killed 13 people, uh, 14 were injured, right? Not just on the span itself that fell in the river, because both of these two spans here, they had deflected downwards by about seven inches. Oh, fuck. When, when they added the new span, so they shot right back up like springs. Ideal. Ooh. And it just, yeah, exactly. And it, you just get thrown into the river by this fucking catapult? Yeah, exactly. That's that's a pretty like gruesome way to go. <laughs> yeah, I was say I was going with comical. It could be both. It's both. You're just kind of flying upwards off this bridge in like your stovepipe hat, thinking, oh, "How's that?" How this happened. <laughs> so the first thought was that since this was, um, I believe, 1916, the first thought it was German sabotage, right? Hmm. But they later found out it was a failure in one of the castings on one corner, right? That sounds German. Yep. I'm going to be a 9-11 truther, but for this. <laughs> so, Not for the Pentagon, but only for this specific yeah, bridge. Yeah, Canada did 9-11, but it's this 9-11. Well, what you can sort of see is that, like, over here, the bridge is twisted by 90 degrees, and over here, mm. it's, it's not, right? Because it slid up, one casting failed that was securing it in place, and it slid off one corner... And then it twisted 90 degrees, and it sank into the river, 200 feet down. Along with the Allen key that had just those been, poor like, bastards. They probably didn't. They probably <laughs> yeah. didn't tighten it up well enough with the Allen key beforehand. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> Can never be too careful. Those Allen keys will get you. This uh, this investigation went a little more quickly. They found out pretty quickly it was it was the failure of the casting. St. Lawrence Bridge Company took full responsibility. And they, uh, well, they rebuilt the bridge. They built a new bridge. They lifted it in place properly the second time. Uh, and, well, it's still there. Um, <laughs> oh, terrific. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's your it bridge. It only took three tries. Um, Who would do that? It only killed 88 people. <laughs> At least we didn't kill 88 people. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That we know of. The original span is still sitting there in the bottom of the river. Is it really? Of course, mm -hmm. love it. Just being, just being an just, artificial. Just reef. doing stuff, doing bri dead bridge stuff. The first train hmm. crossed the span in 1919, 20 years after construction got underway. Timely. <laughs> and then it's uh, rumored in Canada that the original bridge was reused to create uh, the uh, Order of the Engineer rings that you get in Canada because this is such a cultural memory. It's like, you know, we, we need especially, we need to, like, mythologize engineering to make sure that people don't screw up this badly again. <laughs> <laughs> Did that work? Or? I mean, I mean, there's never uh, been. Do, do we have any future Canadian episodes in the pipe? Like... No, there's, there's never been an engineering disaster in Canada since this bridge. Nope. No, no, okay, absolutely nope, zero. Nope, nope. Okay. Yeah. Because of the rings. Yeah, because of the rings. So, the Quebec Bridge is still there today. It's now a combined rail and road bridge, because uh, they took out one of the tracks to add more car lanes, which is dumb. Boo. 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 Yeah. 
it's still very ugly. Uh, they didn't even like they didn't even paint it like the the fourth bridge. Um, it, it looks a lot worse in photos that aren't this one. <laughs> <laughs> You've captured its like glamour shot with like the Instagram filters and stuff. It looks sick. It looks like my lungs feel. Like, why is that bit of it green and that bit of it grey? And it looks like when you leave like mints in the fridge for too long. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh. Well, I've I've seen this in real life at least once. And uh, uh yeah. yeah, it does. Mm. Didn't we cross the Quebec Bridge? Yeah. 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 We, we did not die. Yeah, we didn't die. No. Yeah. Stuck it. Podcast dislikers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> not killed by Quebec Bridge. But, uh, yeah. still there, it is still the world's largest cantilever bridge, or largest single-span cantilever bridge, um, and... Scott's <laughs> mad. Yeah. Uh, Scott's mad, ho's mad, etc. Scottish ho mad. <laughs> 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 but anyway, that's the story of how it only took three tries to put up this bridge, uh, and obviously, you know, the next episode will be where it only took two tries to put up a bridge, uh, which will be the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Oh, yeah. No, no, we, um, we're we gonna do a, a re-up, I think. I mean, I know we had some issues, uh, so we're gonna kind of do a, a second parter to that, so look forward to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure we did it justice in episode 13, uh, but like, sound off in the comments to episode 13, let us know what you yeah. think. Uh, yeah, yeah, we took forever, we know, but we hope it's worth it. Uh, hopefully people will stop thinking that it's just a dumb meme that we're doing. Like, it's just a running joke. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I mean, it, you know, we really do want to give the people what they want, so. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So that was the podcast. Uh, uh, commercials. It's commercial time. Do your commercial. Uh, listen to Trash Future. It's on podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, pray for our girl Alice as she uh, slips yes. into death. Yeah, I was about to say. Yes, do, do, do pray for me. <laughs> Five times a day. <laughs> mm hmm. Yes. All right. Ross, go. Uh, watch my YouTube channel. Join Philly Transit Union. Um, mm. I, I don't know. Uh, oh, subscribe fuck. to the Patreon. Oh, we, should have, we should have the next bonus episode up by the time this episode is up. Mm. It's on Liam's van. I can't wait. Oh, you just go to the Philly Transit Riders Union, and everybody there is yelling at you about Franklin. <laughs> almost certain that's bound to happen eventually. Yeah, I'll do it uh, once we're done recording. I assure you, our loyal listeners, I will go into his room, scream at him about assets <laughs> until it's uploaded. Uh, I'm doing it. I'm I'm doing work. Work is happening. I know. I know. I know. Man. Trust me. Okay? Trust the process. I, no. Yeah, look, uh, you know I know that'll be another bonus episode. It's just my opinions on the Philadelphia 76ers and why my girlfriend is wrong about everything. <laughs> oh, my sweet baby. Um, Sticking to sports. So, uh, but yeah, well, you know, um, last, I am Liam Anderson. I am at Old Man Anderson on Twitter. Nailed it. Um, please continue. To get mad at an engineering disasters podcast for doing what it says on the tin. Um, yeah, definitely. I am very excited about the bonus episode on my van. And also... It's so good. We, that, that's with <laughs> Riley Quinn from Trash Future. Before yes. he died. Before tragically. he died, tragically, yeah. in a USB accident. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, can, we, can we tell the people we're, we're making merch or, or are we cutting that out? Well, I mean, we've we've agreed to commission yeah. it, right? So we can just say that it's coming. It's coming in the, in the future. future. Yeah, buy our shit. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there will be merch in the future. Yeah, buy buy the stuff. Wear wear it everywhere. Wear wear it to job interviews. Wear it to <laughs> like to formal settings. <laughs> wear it to a wedding, to a funeral. Properly for this all is, occasions. This is so much funnier when you know what the merch <laughs> design is going to be. Yeah, I want I want a design that just says that just has a tin of Copenhagen on it, and it just says. Scott Wagner once cut in front of me and lied at his sheets. Uh, <laughs> anyway. You're just abusing this process to get shirts that are just for you specifically. Yes, but I see nothing wrong with that. You know, we only uh, do in-jokes. We don't want to make merchandise that people will buy. 
Well, you know, <laughs> someone was mad at us for making two minutes worth of in-jokes on an hour-plus podcast, so... Oh, my God. I don't know what to do about that guy. Uh... Yeah, there's more like the the ratio is off. We do more like two minutes of out jokes, and then the rest is in. Yeah, true. I think so. Uh, all right. Um, is that it for everybody? I think so. Yeah, I believe so. All right, that all was right. shorter than I thought it would go. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. That means we're getting better yes. at it. Probably we didn't say bye, everybody. Yeah, it's true. We need to say bye. Bye, bye everybody. everybody. <laughs> bye, everybody. <laughs> all right, all right, we're out. <laughs>